Among those, the Browns and Baker Mayfield, the Jets, Sam Darnold, and Lamar Jackson at the Ravens camp. Other teams with rookie minicaps include the Packers, the Chiefs, the Vikings, Raiders, 49ers, and Seahawks. One week after he was drafted number one overall by the Cleveland Browns, former Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield went through his first NFL practice with his new team. The Browns among those teams holding rookie minicamp. And despite his draft status, Tyrod Taylor remains the team's starting quarterback for now. Q said something like yesterday, that's not going to change when he's talking about Tyrod. Does that put a fire under you? Do you think do you take it a certain way? I'm always competitive. It wouldn't matter what he was saying uh, in regards to the competition. I'm still going to compete and try and win that job. And so uh, I'm going to listen to him, but i got to go compete. And first and foremost, i got to learn my job. Earning the respect of the older guys is important. Um, it's just and it's just like I said yesterday, I have to know my job first. And then from there, I can you know, do everything else. Overreaction Monday continues with this. Baker Mayfield will redshirt, if you will, this season. Diana? Um, I do not. That's an overreaction. I do not think he will not step on the field. I think Baker Mayfield's going to get on the field because he's the a number one overall pick. Um, also, I mean, they're saying Tyrod Taylor is, is the starter here. And let's just take a look at Hugh Jackson's uh, past here. Remember when he said Deshaun Kaiser is the starter? Uh, they were rolling with him. They were going to take him out. Well, Kaiser's now in Green Bay, right? That didn't work out. He had him start and took him out, had him start. It was, it was a little bit of a disaster there. So the commitment to or the commitment Hugh Jackson has, um, not very dependable, um, probably as dependable as your flights that you were taking this last weekend. But those were definitely not dependable. Being said, this this is a city that doesn't just need wins. This is a city that needs hope, and, and it seems that they're all in on Baker Mayfield giving them just that. Well, and Bill, you you can certainly speak to the pressure from the ownership level on down when you have a number one overall draft pick. I hear everything that's being said. I happen to agree with most of it, but I'm not sure it matters. Uh, well, first of all, if you're in a decision-making position, the head coach and or the general manager, and you'd accede to the head coach, by the way, in, in most circumstances, um, the answer is the number one pick plays when he's ready, and that's a decision that only the coaches can make and the people that are on the GMs on the field in, in most cases and understands what's going on. Uh, Tyrod Taylor will be hard to beat out because he is a good quarterback. And he's a professional quarterback. And he will have a big, big leg up on Baker Mayfield. And the only way Baker Mayfield gets in early is, I think, he, he, either Tyrod gets hurt, and I hope that doesn't happen, mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, uh, that, that everything goes bad. Uh, otherwise, I think he'll sit for a while. Let me ask you this, Bill, because you have so much experience in this league, but how much does a percentage of error go up if other people get involved in this type of decision, other people than the guys on the field who want to be making it. Exponentially. 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 Because the other people simply don't know, and they're reacting to outside pressures, stories, fan engagement, things of that nature. Marv Levy once said, and he was quoting Johnny Redker, a great broadcaster from, for the uh, Chicago Bulls in the, in the old days, if you listen to the fans, you'll soon sit next to them. Yeah, that, that's my true. favorite. You'll soon sit with them. It yeah. is, it's the truth, too. I'm, I agree with Bill saying. I'm going over reaction. I don't think he's going to play early. I don't think he's going to be a week one starter. But eventually this season, I think Cleveland is going to put him on the field. Now, I think we're just talking about self-control here, sticking to the plan, those type of things in terms of Cleveland and where they where they see Baker Mayfield being as a player and where what Tyrod Taylor gives them. Tyrod Taylor, I've also respected as a quarterback, and all, all everywhere Ty, Tyrod's been, his teammates have gravitated towards him too. That's important. That that locker room has support of the quarterback, and if he does, and they win some games, you know, maybe it is possible. By the way, a guy I know and that Teddy knows, who's probably won more games than anybody who works in New England rarely if ever bows to fan or media pressure I can't and he's done okay i can't imagine I can't who you're speaking right of it doesn't come to yeah. me off the top of my head but i bet you're right belichick that oh that, that's it that just guy came to me. that yeah. guy all right uh well he speaking of Cleveland. belichick he spent some time with the new york jets a team that traded up in the draft to make sure they got their quarterback that quarterback it turns out is usc sam darnold who also joined his new team for rookie minicamp over the weekend <laughs> He 
He was great. I want him to play right now. He, he was good, you know. He obviously we threw the ball around a little bit, and you know he, he'll be getting better. <laughs> what is it about that podium? It's something about that podium in New York just just sparks it's the that air. Head. It is. Yeah. It was not hot. You know that. By the way, Todd handles it great. I love yeah. Todd Bowles. I do. I could. It's so obviously tongue firmly planted in cheek yeah. because we have a long way to go. But here's what I'll say, Teddy, and I'll start with you for Overreaction Monday. Sam Darnold will be the first rookie quarterback to start. I don't, play. I don't want Coach Bowles yelling at me. <laughs> I I'm, going my overreaction. I'm going overreaction. Fair enough. With Josh McCown and the, the, the development of Sam Darnold, it's, it's going to be a little process for him. I'm, I'm taking that route, especially after I see the head coach tell me that. So I'm going to say it's over an, an overreaction. Great young player in Sam Darnold. Yes, Jet fans are, are very, very excited. But I definitely see, see Todd Bowles as the one that will stick to the plan. And like, like Bill's talking about, That'll be, he'll be one that says to himself, he's not going to play until he's ready. I'm oh, afraid so. that, it, uh, unfortunately, he may get on the field simply because, in Josh's case, and I hope this doesn't happen, he's got a history of some injuries. So, you know, you get an injury, then you got to put Darnold in there. And I, I'm afraid that may happen. What about Teddy Bridgewater? Well, we'll see what Teddy does. You know, right now, he's an unknown quantity because of the injury, yeah. and that's a serious injury. If Teddy's able to go, all bets are off yeah. Teddy plays. It, it's interesting because we have these discussions about which quarterback will play and when these rookie quarterbacks will start. This is all dependent on the health of the starting quarterback. I mean, we, you know, these, these dictums, if you will, can change in an instant, in a snap. Well, Tyrod has, for example, has no history of injury. He's got minor nicks and, and, and things, but no major injuries. In, in Teddy's case, unfortunately, and in Todd's situation. case, unfortunately, yeah. There, yeah. there is that. And I'm with the guys on, on it being an overreaction that he'll be the first rookie quarterback to get in there because Josh McCown is such a great game manager. He's got the confidence. He's got the experience. He's poised. He understands how it works. He understands how it works in New York, too. And I'm also with Bill on the idea that, you know, New York isn't a very patient city. We know no. what the New York Post and the Daily News is going to put on the back page if this team starts the season, you know, losing one or two maybe even three games at the start of the year, they're going to be calling for the, you know, for Sam Darnold immediately. So Todd Bowles, though, has, has shown that, that he is disciplined and he'll probably most likely stick with the plan. But I don't think Sam Darnold's going to be the first rookie we see out there. Well, a little bit of humor never hurt either. And clearly Todd Bowles has that. So that, that's didn't worth know. Keep, keep it up. <laughs> uh, we'll do one more, shall we? Lamar Jackson received optimistic reviews for his performance in rookie minicamp with the Baltimore Ravens. And while the Ravens also maintain their commitment to their starter, that's Joe Flacco, the team is clearly looking for ways to get Jackson the football. Uh, well, the NFL is totally different from college. Um, it's a lot faster. Um, we got to work as a unit. Um, it's fun out here, though. I'm having fun, so yeah, it's cool. You, you enter in a new system, you know, um, it's fun to learn. Uh, and you're doing something you love. So. Different drop backs, you know, um, being on the center a lot more than I was in college, so yeah. Yeah, and, well, until you put your eyes on a guy on your practice field, you know, you, I don't think you really, it's all just your imagination up until that point. And um, the thing I was really impressed with is I thought he was accurate. You know, you, you, you read the reports and stuff like that, but, you know, he's, he's a naturally talented thrower. He's got natural arm talent. So that's something that uh, I think people were questioning. So to see him out here throwing the ball, uh, naturally, very accurately, I thought it was a big plus. All right, work with us on this. It is overreaction Monday. That's why we, we call it so, Bill. But your turn to strike first here. The Ravens have a quarterback, controver quarterback controversy brewing. I don't, I don't think it's an overreaction because quarterback controversies, by definition, come from the outside, from the media and fans. Um, as long as you don't have one inside, you're okay. You can survive it. Um, but uh, Lamar is going to be on the field almost from day one with a uh, run pass option and a, a spread kind of package where he can feature his ability with the ball in his hands, which may be the best in last year's draft. He, he and Saquon Barkley are in a class by themselves. Nobody else is close. So he'll be on the field early and he'll be doing spectacular things early. Uh, so I don't think there's any question that that's going to lead to drum beats, especially if the team doesn't play well. Fair enough. And when you see that sort of raw athletic ability and those things he can do that other quarterbacks just can't simply by 
by nature of the beast, you've got, you're right, that drum, that cres it crescendos. I want to go, Bill, too, on it's not an overreaction. And you bring up that the quarterback controversies come from the outside, as long as it's not in the meeting room, it's not in the building. But, you know, Lamar Jackson told reporters that Joe Flacco, RG3, either of those quarterbacks there in Baltimore have reached out to him just yet. Quite the different story. I was in New York on Friday, and, you know, you talked to Sam Darnold, and he's been in touch with Josh McCown the second he got drafted. So we don't really know if there is a controversy yet, you know, between Flacco and them, but he doesn't sound like he's too happy about this. That said, Teddy touched on it before, the motivation that this will give Joe Flacco. The last time we saw him under pressure was when he was on that contract year, and we saw what he was able to produce. So maybe this is a, a good push for, for Joe Flacco to, to work a little harder. You know, there, there are many out there that have said that he hasn't done enough to get this team ready, especially on offense. So now with having another weapon, and maybe this is also another message to the rest of the organization that Joe Flacco's time is up, that Lamar Jackson could possibly be the future here. Yeah, this, Wendy, this is real. I, this is real. You this think is, so? This is I, you know, I'm, I am surprised. I, I thought you'd both say it was not an overreaction. No, I mean, that it was an overreaction. It, it, Bill's right. The quarterback controversy, of course, is going to come from outside. But everyone, this is the most spectacular football player in college football for the past two years. I mean, seeing what he did, especially two years ago when he won that Heisman, is, is just eye-opening. You've got it there. You've got, when he comes on the field for those package of plays that Bill is talking about, and he goes out there and runs for 50-yard touchdown, or he throws it 50 yards in the air on the run, people are going to see that. Yep. And Think and they're going to see Joe Flacco's see mentality and see and remember the the struggles that they've had offensively, especially last year. It's going to be brewing. It's already brewing right now. It's like I said, motivation to the number one quarterback. Flacco has to come out strong. Flacco has to establish himself as the starter. This is this is something where everyone, even the players on the on the Ravens, will be watching. And Flacco comes off the field. Here comes Lamar Jackson. They may all stand up just to watch because they also feel that excitement that Lamar Jackson brings. Well, the last time Joe Flacco bet on himself, good things happened. So time, time to roll the dice again. In what had to be one of the feel-good stories of this year's draft, UCF's Shaquem Griffin joined his twin brother Shaquille in Seattle, reunited again after their college careers. The newest Seahawk also joined his teammates for rookie minicamp over the weekend. It's a tremendous honor to be here. It's been, it's, it's been a great experience so far, being able to meet new guys and being able to interact with the coaches. And it's, it's everything that I thought about, you know, you know, having the coaches and having that family vibe. And they're not here to, to, to get mad at you. They're here to coach you and make you a better player. I feel pretty comfortable there. I mean, I, uh, when I was at UCF, I played in a lot of different positions, so I don't, I don't feel, you know, uncomfortable moving around. And, you know, I feel like what they put me at right now is, is a pretty good fit. And, you know, it doesn't matter where I play, you know, as long as I get opportunity to, to, to help you know, better my team in any, in any aspect I play in the game. Also in Seattle, Pete Carroll says he isn't sure when Earl Thomas will be back. Carroll's comments confirm that Thomas, who is seeking a new contract, has not been there for the voluntary portion of the Seahawks offseason program. Attendance, by the way, is not mandatory until Seattle's veteran minicamp, which takes place from June 12th, to the 14th. Here's what Coach Carroll had to say. We'll find out. We've got to communicate. Phase two doesn't look like it's suiting him right now. So we'll see. We'll see what's happening. Phase three is around the corner for us. So we'll see. We've got one more week of phase two. File that under to be continued. No doubt about that. Here on Overreaction Monday, here's what I'll say. Earl Thomas will not be a Seahawk. In 2018, is that an overreaction? I'm going to start with this saying that it is an overreaction. I think he will be with Seattle. And this is just going to talking to those in the Seattle organization, including their GM, who has said since the combine when I sat and talked with him, we are not looking to trade him. Are we listening to offers? Yes, they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be doing their jobs if they weren't listening to offers. But there was a determination in his voice that he wanted to keep him. And we were just talking about the value of what Earl Thomas means to Seattle and how much they need him. It sounded like it was going to take a lot, and at this point, it doesn't seem like there's going to be a deal that, that's going to be struck there. Bill? He's going to be there. He's not, so overreacting to and say there's, he's not. And there's no reason for him to be there now because he's coming off a bad injury. He's probably just in the position where he, he doesn't really feel good about going out there. So 
bottom line, he'll be there. Again, not mandatory until mid-June. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it either. I think it's an overreaction. Earl Thomas, to me, has been the bus driver of the Legion of Boom. And I think Pete knows that. I think the organization knows that. You know, him at that center field position, the way he tackles, the way he leads, you know, they know how important he is. I think Earl, Earl Thomas, I mean, he's 29 years old. He's still young. 29 years old, yes, and he, he's going to be in Seattle. City. And they've seen a lot of familiar faces depart. Wouldn't hurt to have some consistency, to have one of those guys who's a veteran in that locker room stick around. I, I agree. Uh, if you want to be celebrating fantasy this season, well, guess what? Teddy, what do you have to have? The right quarterback. Please. Ah. <laughs> Give me a minute. When NFL Live returns, Matthew <laughs> Berry lays out his top fantasy quarterback. I'm not drafting quarterback for round seven. <laughs> oh.